This tutorial is really about getting started in multiple driver research. What we like to do here is try and get you started with confidence, guide you through some of the pitfalls because it can be very intimidating and the reason uh, it might be off-putting is because there are many different permutations. We have multiple drivers and by multiple that could be four or five or six or even ten and those drivers will vary from region to region, they may even vary from month to month. Make a list of all of the potential environmental drivers in your particular uh, location or with the species or the community that you're looking at or the season you're looking at because each of these factors will influence what that list of drivers will be. In the cartoon you can see of the ocean on the left hand side we have the open ocean on the right hand side we have the near shore ocean right by the land and there's a couple of points to take from this. Depending on where you are in the ocean you're going to see a different set or suite of drivers. On the left hand side we have many drivers which may be more influenced by climate change but be careful in the right hand side we also have other anthropogenic pressures such as eutrophication, uh, sedimentation uh, fr from increased rainfall and runoff, point source pollutants. So don't just always target the, 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 maybe the obvious climate change factors like acidification. Build a, an experimental design by trying to rank the drivers and see which is the most important, which is perhaps the, uh, the one of least consequence. But again, by starting in this manner, it means you're not going to miss anything out. And a year into your research, you won't think, maybe I should have thought more about anthropogenic pollutants, or I should have considered uh, sedimentation or some other factor. The example I'll give you is actually one just south of uh, Tasmania here, where we're, we're uh, making this video. And uh, I work in the Southern Ocean. I work several thousand kilometers from land. So I don't have to worry about things like point source pollutants or about uh, runoff or sedimentation events. But nonetheless, uh, when I started to look at my list of drivers, there are quite a few. Uh, the, I counted at least five. So for example, temperature, CO2 and hence acidification, nutrients, trace metals such as iron, and also the light climate, because all of these climate change variables will alter in the coming decades and alter uh, considerably. So there's five to begin with. If I look at those with a range of treatment levels, I'm looking at hundreds to possibly thousands of different permutations, and that's even without having any replication. We have our list of drivers, and then the next step in terms of getting started is to try and find out which driver is dominant, or in some cases, several drivers may be co-dominant. Two or three may, may have an equal role. In our case, we were able to look at uh, the literature, there were around 50 publications and they, they pointed us towards temperature being the ultimate driver. But again, many of these studies were not from uh, south of Tasmania. Some of them were from the Atlantic sector of the Southern Ocean where conditions may be subtly different. So again, you have to be very careful and, and cast a critical eye over these publications. But again, we took temperature and we decided then to carry out a further experiment to try and uh, make sure that we were, we were moving in the right direction with our experimental design. You can very simply calculate the number of, uh, the number of permutations. It's called uh, doing the factorial. It's a very simple mathematical calculation. And so you find that something like factorial 7 will give you over 5,000 different permutations. Uh, and so it's very easy to dial that up in terms of the interplay of different drivers and also the, the interplay of treatment levels. Again, never mind replication. And so clearly we have to be clever in our design. We have to try and work out what drivers will be in our uh, inventory and which are the most important drivers. The key thing to bear in mind is it's all about location, 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 or season, season, season. There, there are many permutations that they're, they're constantly shifting around and what might be your driver inventory might differ considerably from someone in the next lab who might be working on a different organism or a different community. And so when you meet at coffee and you're, you're both doing things slightly differently, don't be alarmed because that's just the, the nature of this. So it's a case of really keeping an open mind, looking very carefully and diligently. And this is the first step towards your, uh, you know, your, your uh, comprehensive and uh, valuable experimental design.